Apple's Jennifer Jolly joins us live with our new Wired Wednesday report with details around Apple's upcoming AR VR headset. Jen, what do you have for us? Obviously, we're having some tech issues ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> it always happens whenever we talk tech, there's a tech glitch here mm -hmm. or there, which is part of the point and part of the story. So, so many people wanted Apple this week at, at its giant WWDC developers conference. They wanted them to do something they've never done before, which is offer some kind of concrete hint, a sneak peek, even an accidental leak of their long awaited, much rumored, highly anticipated headset or smart glasses. It, Apple, well, it did not. But we are not completely in the dark about Apple's next big thing. Here's what we know, or at least think we know so far and why it matters. So just this past Monday, Apple unveiled the biggest MacBook Air redesign in more than a decade, which will run on its M2 chip. Now, why does this matter beyond the lighter, faster, thinner, better laptops? Well, the M2 is codenamed Staten, according to insider sources. It is slated to be the main processor powering Apple's mixed reality headset. Also, the iOS 16 update that gives us our messages back when we send them accidentally within 15 minutes, well, that will improve Apple's spatial audio support. That is great for AR, VR, and mixed reality. So does that mean we won't see a virtual reality headset from Apple this year? Everybody's waiting for it. Yeah, there was a lot of speculation, a lot of rumor mill flying around that we would see it unveiled at WWDC this week. No, we do not expect to see it until 2023 at the earliest, but the pressure is on. Apple, Meta, formerly Facebook, Amazon, Google, all the bigs are in that race for the next big hit, that new smartphone-like bestseller. For years now, we know that Apple has toiled in secret on an augmented and virtual reality headset that could one day lead it to a post iPhone future and its first major new product category since the Apple Watch in 2015. We also know that Apple execs showed off the latest iteration of this headset to its board in mid-May, that report according to Bloomberg Insiders. We also know that Apple's trademarked the name Reality OS or ROS for short. Now that's the software expected to run on the headset. So we have a lot of hints. We know that the uh, Apple version reportedly combines elements of virtual and augmented reality and is codenamed N301. That features advanced processors as well as ultra high resolution screens. This is the device that we hope to see next year. So the first model will offer both AR and VR in mixed reality. Apple's reportedly working on standalone augmented reality, AR reality glasses codenamed N421 for release later this decade. Unlike VR, AR overlays digital information and images on top of the real world. That is the technology so many of us are waiting for. And Jen, Len got his hands on the Meta, Meta Quest 2. There he goes. It's the latest virtual reality <laughs> headset from the tech company. So I wonder how you're doing over there, Len. He's been testing it out. The technology is pretty neat. Yeah. All right, I see, Len, that you are in Beat Saber. That is one of my all-time favorite <laughs> Quest 2, Meta Quest 2, formerly known as Facebook Oculus, games. Now, what you'll notice when you first put on one of these headsets, if you've never done this before, is that you experience a kind of a, a I like to disjointed... Duck. <laughs> yeah, you, you kind of feel like, oh my gosh, this is something that um, is really novel, it's really new. It's the beginning of this whole notion that so many tech companies are betting on for the future of a melding of digital and real life. Now, Len, I don't know if we can hear you if you talk to us, but what does it feel like for you? It feels fun. It feels good to escape reality for He wants to yeah. escape the show <laughs> a for a little bit. Or two. <laughs> I love it. So, what you're experiencing too, you're probably your heart rate's starting to race. What's really interesting for me about uh, how 
this kind of VR has evolved is that you can get a really great workout. So it actually starts to have some application to real life. So you can exercise, beat saber, you're trying not to let these, these objects smash into you. You have to kind of incorporate dance. You, yeah, you have to duck, you have to move around. Uh, Meta sees a future in which VR becomes the next best thing to being physically next to someone in the real world. So it goes from games right now, most people are just into gaming, but it, they want to take it from gaming into a more social realm. Multiplayer games are becoming more and more popular, especially since the pandemic. Um, they want to imagine how to use VR as a work device, which is leading to kind of the next big thing, Project Cambria, which Mark Zuckerberg has debuted. So there's now a physical store where you can go in and try this for yourself in the South Bay. It's not mainstream yet, but all bets are that it will be sooner rather than later. All right, and Len, since you have it on, I do want to know, because I've never tried this before, is it just everything you see what we see on the screen, or can you tell that you're in the studio at all right now? What's going on with you? Ooh, first, I'm out of breath. <laughs> yeah, so just try to get it out. <laughs> putting my workout in. But yeah, you're like in this whole new world. I can't see anything but just these blocks. I'm you're going at it. I'm proud out of right you. Now. <laughs> Great job. Justin Gianna, please get him some water for me. And Jennifer Jolly, thank you so much for yeah. joining us. This stuff looks great.